On this episode of Pedal Box, we're adding the front part of our roll support in and finally taking off the temporary support we added way, way, way back when for the steering column and adding in a proper support. Getting the windscreen surround done means we can get the next part of our structure built. We need to come off this main hoop here, down along the A-pillars into the bottom of the chassis. Now to do that, we have to know where the windscreen is going to sit, and that's what this tells us. We can position this without having to worry about having a fragile windscreen around here and welding around it. So with that in mind, I turned to some finest cardboard-aided design. So this is our A-pillar. Well, this isn't, because this one's cardboard and that's not very strong, but this is the shape that it's going to be, and this allowed us to get some pieces bent up. This goes from the main hoop down the side of the windscreen and shows us where on the bottom of the car it's going to join up to. Now we had to make a couple of changes based on stock availability that I had because it's very difficult to get stuff at the moment. But here's our actual A-pillar. Thanks to the guys at Ignition Motorsports for helping us get these sorted. We just need to cut these out at the top, make sure they fit onto the side of the arms in the right place and then build the standoffs to fit into the bottom. So we'll start with the standoffs and then fit these on after. Subscribe to the channel, check out the website pedalbox.show slash shop and patreon.com slash pedalboxshow. The standoffs are made of 2 inch 3mm wall box. This is a fairly standard way to mount a roll cage so that it tucks up really nicely against the roof line. Even though we don't have a roof right now, this still makes it a lot easier to join the tube we have onto the chassis. The tops are closed off to make a flat base to weld the tube onto. They're trimmed to length on the chassis, and then the tube is trimmed to match the angle. There's going to be a lot of work cleaning up the welds around here, but at least on the whole our welding is getting an awful lot better than it was way back at the start. Now we've got this side tacked in and the box is completely attached onto the rest of the chassis, I'm going to put the other box in and start measuring up for the other side, which I think is going to be the most stressful part of building this whole thing. I'm trying to get these level or as close as I can possibly get, making sure this fits and everything else, this is going to take some time. Last night I managed to get both of these almost completely welded in. The underside I'm not going to tackle until we flip the chassis over again, or at least put it on its side so I'm not welding directly up because that just doesn't work. But the standoffs are in, these are in, and they're pretty strong. So the big test is how easy is it to get out. I tried getting in a few seconds ago, but I didn't use the wing, I was stood on the floor. So I'll try now to get back out. So it's not actually too bad to get in and out of. Now the next piece we need to add in is the cross brace that goes across the top of the windscreen. And that's just more of the same tube, notched, and we'll weld that in now. So with a couple more welds put in here, this is all secured in. I've dipped the windscreen surround down slightly because its support runs right through here, but we'll move it back around once we're happy with everything else. The next thing I'm going to look at is joining across the front of these two A-pillars, and that's got a little bit of a problem attached to it because we have no 40mm, we can't get any more 40mm because places are closed, and we need to join them together. Now the only thing I have is the 50mm that I originally tried to build this out of, which joining 50mm onto 40mm isn't going to look particularly pretty and I'm not exactly thrilled about the whole thing, so we're going to have to do the best we can, but it's definitely going to be strong enough and it's very similar, if not a little bit thicker than what they normally put in the TTs and the A3 that we took all of the gubbins out of for this car. So hopefully it'll still work and it will fit right underneath the two supports I already have for the windscreen so it should meet up with the bottom of it really nicely. After spending a couple of days trying to fit these, this almost seems positively easy. So I've just cut this around and this fits in just like that. Now we have still got the problem that this is a 50mm tube and that this is a 40mm tube. And the way I think I'm going to solve that is just take a little bit off the back of each one so we haven't got this massive gaping hole that we need to try and fill up. What we'll do then is fill over the back with some 2mm plate to match the wall thickness on the tube just so it comes up and joins the back of this pipe here. 
A common theme the last few episodes on this has been either getting rid of or modifying things we put in a long time ago, like the rear suspension mounts, or now this. So we're going to be able to get rid of our other steering column support that we've had in since almost the very beginning. This has never really fit well and it was always a bit of a temporary measure. So we're going to take this out because now we can mount the top of this steering column bracket onto the back of here, a lot like it is in the stock car. Now to stabilize the steering column support like we had before, I'm going to make a couple of brackets out of this two inch L section I cut from a piece of box. I've cut this notch into the back of this one and this will fit underneath the back up to the front of here and join onto the top of the pedal box, the cross member and the front support that we left on here. Now that will work quite nicely, hold it all in and we can tidy this up, make it a little bit neater and then hopefully fit everything back on the car. Now before I put this back onto the chassis, we're going to clean it up. I'm going to paint them all black, but there's a few things we need to do first. I went over this with a needler to take off all of the loose rust. I'm do, going to do this on the hubs, the calipers, the carriers, everything that we've taken and salvaged off various different cars. So taking all of that rust off has left this pretty good. Now the last thing I'm going to do before I paint it is go over with some rust remover, That's the same stuff we used on the Thunderbird bonnet. And this just cleans off the rust really nicely, anything that's left on the top, and takes it back to a reasonable bare metal. So I'm just going to put it onto a rag and then just wipe it on around here. Now you do this in a well ventilated space or if you're indoors wear a respirator or both but I can't talk and use my respirator so I'm just keeping this at arm's length. Make sure you use gloves and just wipe it off really nicely. Now I'm going to go and find my respirator, put the rest of this on, clean it, paint it and then it'll be done. But there's one more thing to do before that and that's remove this spring seat. We don't need this whole pad because we're not running a spring on this part of the arm. And this is just cast onto the outside and the inside edge. We're going to cut this off, flap it down and make sure that it looks a lot better on here. The bump stop is actually useful for us. We can add a piece onto the side of the chassis later on if we feel the need to and we can still make use of this. Now while all those parts are drying, I'm going to turn my attention to the steering column, which has slowly been getting more and more rusty. This doesn't have any protection on it because it normally lives completely with inside the car, aside from this little section down here. So I'm going to paint up as many surfaces as I can, ignoring this one, which I'm going to re-grease, because this is a friction surface that goes in and out on this plunger, and it's getting quite stiff to move around. So I'm going to clean up as much of this as I can with the rust remover, and then go over it, paint it up, and hopefully it should survive a little bit better than it is now. With everything stripped, cleaned and painted, it's time for everything to go back together. It looks so much better now than it did before, we should have done this ages ago. But it at least makes for a nice kind of celebration for the 50th episode. Well, that's a huge milestone for both the car and the channel. It certainly makes getting into the car a lot harder. We're gonna to have to put some grab handles so you can kind of swing yourself in when you're getting in and out of it. And I'm really glad I've put these bracing plates on so you will actually be able to stand out of the car rather than trying to straddle it. That would have been a nightmare. But for the first time doing anything with notching tube, welding tube, bending, anything like that, this has been, as far as I'm concerned, a complete success. It's really made the car feel like a car rather than just a tub sort of with bits thrown together in it. When you put the cover on it actually looks like a car which is kind of crazy.
Hopefully Chris will be back soon and we can get on with more work on this. I'm going to keep going. There's a lot more work that I want to do and I think I can get done at the front of the car with some lights and start really kind of giving it some more shape. I also I need to do brake pipes, fuel system, um, I've still got to look at the wiring. I still have to strip the rest of the wiring from the TT, which I'm not looking forward to at all. There's loads and loads of stuff I can be getting on with, so the updates shouldn't stop. I'm going to try and keep the one episode a week going at the moment. Whilst I'm not commuting anywhere at the moment, I've got loads more time at home, which is great. So do subscribe to the channel, like the video, and let us know what you think. And check out shop.pedalbox.show if you'd like to buy t-shirts, hats, stickers, or anything else to help support the channel. And if you'd like to support us directly, you can go to patreon.com slash pedalboxshow and support us from anything from a dollar to ten dollars a month. Thanks very much to all our existing patrons. It really does help keep us in welding wire and gas and grinding discs because I'm not a very good welder, so I've got a lot of crimes to hide under paint. So here's to the next 50 episodes. We'll get this closer to being a functioning car, get the Golf on the road, get it to a track day, get the Thunderbird going again, and get the SD1 back when it comes from the body shop, and we can really push that project going. I know Chris has got a lot of ideas for that, so that's gonna be really, really interesting to see. In the meantime, check out the back catalog if you haven't seen everything so far. We'll try and keep the one-week schedule up, and we'll see you next time. Thanks very much for watching.